Okay, let's talk about thumb locks. So when I say thumb lock, I mean something like this, where you put, you've got a little um, piece with a sort of a, a, a bridge on it that's on the main part of your bag. And then on your flap, you have this little bit that just clips in and you have to use your thumb to push it down. Oops, can't do it, it's too, too small to unclip it. So that's a thumb lock, sometimes called a press lock, um, but I've always called them thumb locks. Now I've got four different sorts here and of four different qualities and four different fittings. Um, so I'm gonna show you all of them. I've made myself a very um, basic, I've made a flap and I've made sort of the body of a bag. So if you can kind of imagine that would go over the top and you'd have your thumb lock down here somewhere to lock your bag. Now I'm gonna start with the cheapest version. And this version has four pieces. So we have the piece that goes on the flap and this bit here goes up and down. It's, it, you can see it sits slightly proud and it's sort of spring loaded. We have that piece. We have this little spike, little metal spike, which is what holds that part on. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We have the catch. So this is the piece that's got that little bridge that goes across. This is the bit that goes on the main part of your bag and um, a back plate. So a washer, some people would call it. Now these bits generally all fit in much the same way. They nearly all have a washer. So you have to make little holes for these bits, these spikes to go through, push the spikes in, I put the washer on and push the spikes down. This is very, you can almost, if I, you can hear how tinny it is. It is as cheap as chips. Um, they're not very shiny. Let me put it against that one I just had, or this one, this is bigger. You can kind of see when I put them next door to each other, <coughs> this one is A, much heavier. If I drop that on the, you can hear the difference. Much heavier, much shinier, much more, much better quality. They look very similar, but they're not. They're worlds apart. So I'm just gonna pop that one back out of the way. I'm gonna show you how this one fits. I'm gonna show you why I don't like them. So we'll start with this piece, um, which basically is your little bridge. This is where the connector goes through and your washer. Let's just pop that out of the way. It's, and that goes on the body of your bag. Now, I've made a bit of a, a faux pas already because I've effectively made a bag and I've already put the lining on. So I'm just gonna move my lining piece out of the way because you wouldn't put this through the lining. You would put this through the outside and any foam stabilizer that you had. So line up where it needs to go. Um, let's find a, some sort of a pen. Let's see if this pen works. Yeah, it does line up where it needs to go. Obviously your pattern will tell you where it needs to go and you need to make little marks on your fabric where these spikes are on the back. You see the little spikes? And all we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use a craft knife to make holes through both the exterior fabric and the foam, I've got um, headliner foam in there. And then we push our spikes through those little cuts that we've just made. Would be better if you could put it on straight though, Christine. Let's just um, cut that hole up the right size, that's better. That's better. So you're going to pop that on there and then you need to turn it over and pop your washer over the top and it goes over the top of those spikes. Now I like to push those spikes out away from the, the center and the only reason that I do that is because if you push them inwards on this particular one it's not too bad because the spikes are quite small. Um, some of them have quite long 
prongs on them. If you push them inwards, they kind of overlap a little bit and they'll make a lump on the back of your hardware, which eventually will rub against your lining. So as always, with nearly all hardware, a little bit of bag maker's friend, the oldie duct tape on the back. That just helps to stop any of that rubbing. Those little spikes on the back were pointed and they will eventually rub on your lining and make a hole on the inside of your bag, which you don't want. That's still not overly straight. I didn't look, I didn't do that terribly well, but that piece is fitted. It looks okay. I don't know if you can see, but there are little triangles cut out of this where those, which, which is what makes those spikes. And you can see the fabric through them. It doesn't bother me overly, but it's not a, it's not a particularly classy look. So let's now get our flap. And what we're going to do with this, you can see that it has a, um, an open top here. And all we're going to do, ooh, I've got a bit of thread, is find where the centre of your flap is. And you're just kind of going to pop that so that it sits on the edge of your flap. And it's just, there's nothing holding it on there. It, it, it will pull off. It's not, it's just sitting on there. You're going to use your... A marker of some sort to mark the two little holes and you can see there that there, there are two small holes in the top of that piece of hardware so I've marked where those two holes are and I can now take that away from there now I like to use one of these to make the holes because I just find it easier You could use um, a, an awl or something like that if you wanted to. You're just gonna make a couple of small holes where those two little marks are that you've made. What you really need to be very careful about is you would do this after you've top stitched, is make sure that you don't make those holes through, oh, you can't see my top stitching because it's in white, through that top stitching, because if you do, you're gonna be splitting your top stitching. Um, make sure that if you do, if you do cut, go through your top stitching, that you put a little bit of glue or um, spray check on it to hold your stitching in place. You don't want your stitching to unravel. So we're gonna pop that back on and line up those holes. It's just, uh, Let's just push out the fabric that I've cut out the middle. It's still sat in the middle there. That's it. So we're going to push, push that thumb lock piece back on. Line up the holes. It's not always as easy as that sounds. That sounds like a really simple thing to do. So line up the holes. Then we take this little spiky bit and push it through the holes from the front to the back and that secures it you can see we've got the little spikes sticking out the back there now these I do push in and over and that's all secure and you can see you've now finished putting your lining on and your lining would cover the back of your bag and what you have is a effective little thumb lock so why don't I like these? Well, first of all, they're not very shiny. That bothers me. Um, second of all, on the back of this piece, you can see those little spikes are still there. Now I can push those down as much as I like, but they are overlapping. Um, and it means that those sharp bits are forever rubbing just above the catch. They will make marks on your bag. They will eventually make holes in the fabric. And it's for this reason, that when you consider how many times you have to, you have to push that flap down against that. And if you think about the life of a bag, how many times you open and close your bag, those little spikes are constantly wearing against that piece of fabric. For me, that's an absolute no-no. So that's why I don't like 
this particular sort of lock they are cheap um and i know a lot of people i've seen a lot of people buy them when they first start bag making simply because they don't know any different it really isn't worth it so i'm going to take this one off because i was only using it for demonstration purposes and i'm going to pop it out of the way now you'll forgive me because i'm going to use the same flap and the same um, base for the next one um now the next one is again very similar it's a bit bigger than the last one but it's the same sort of thing it's very quite tinny quite plasticky very cheap very lightweight with this one i only have i have a the catch part which has that bridge I have a back plate and I just have that. There's no obvious method of securing it, the, the thumb lock. So I'm not going to, um, do I need to do this bit again? Probably not. Let's put it on anyway. Let's just see if those holes that I made before will, you, will work. No, they won't. So I'm going to have to make another hole. So you can use the back plate on this one to um, show you where you need to make your holes it's a slightly unusual looking back plate this one so I'm just gonna pop that on there so I'm gonna pop this back this part on and the back plate again not going through my lining now this back plate, unlike the others, doesn't have holes in it per se. So you're going to pop it on there and you have to put, oops, you have to put the, the prongs inwards because it will hold the back plate on. Again, pull a little bit of bag maker's friend over it and that's all secure. So what about this? How does this hold on? Well, there lies the problem. You don't need to make holes, but if you can see inside of there, there are little teeth. Let's just uh, so get my fat fingers out of the way. There is these little metal teeth inside of there. And the idea is that you compress this and those little metal teeth will hold onto the fabric. Let me show you. So I'm just gonna push. In fact, it's not even gonna push particularly easily. So push that onto where I want it. And then you would compress that. You would use a pair of uh, pliers or something else, even a, a hammer or something like that to compress that. So what it does is it dents the front, but those little spikes will go into the fabric. And it, it will work. It's a bit bigger, this, this style. It looks a bit more showy. But the problem with them is if somebody's a bit vicious on the bag flap, if they if you're in a hurry and you kind of give it a yank, this will pull off and it will rip your fabric because those little teeth are not overly secure. The fitting of them in itself will often dent the front part because it's really difficult to, to compress that. You can see it's got two little nobbles on it that are supposed to look a bit like rivets, I think. Um, and every time I've tried to use one of these, and I've done it a couple of times when I first started bag making, as you try and compress it, it dents. Um, these are cheap and cheerful, and I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole now. Um, worth, worth keeping in mind. They do say you get what you pay for, and if you don't buy quality, then you don't get quality. There are occasions where that's not the case, where sometimes you find an absolute steal. But for the most part, cheap is cheap. And if you spent hours and hours and hours making a beautiful bag, why would you mess it up for the sake of something cheap? So let's go and let's have a look at the next ones. And these two are more quality ones. I'll start with that little tiddly widdly one that I was showing you. And I'm going to move that out of the way. This is very, very tiny. It was the only, it was just one I had that I thought I'd show you. So we have the catch piece. This one's got a, a sort of circular back plate, um, which comes with the washer to fit it. And this is the tiniest. You can see it's a very, very tiny one. Um, and you've got that gap at the top. 
oh, let's move that away. That gap at the top. And what it comes with, you can see on the back there, there are little tiny holes. Now the one at the bottom, you don't need to worry about, but these two at the top are how it's secured. And they are secured with these tiny, tiny little screws. So I'm not gonna, I'm not actually gonna fit this properly because I don't wanna bend the prongs on it because once you start bending prongs, um, let's just pop my screws in there so I don't lose them. Once you start bending prongs, it's very difficult to unbend them and have it actually um, sit nicely. So let's show you again how to fit this. this. This is fitted exactly the same way as the other two. So you're gonna make your, your two little holes. These two are side by side as opposed to up abo uh, one above the other. So I'm just gonna mark where those need to go. And you can use your washer if you find that easier. So when you, when you get your washer, and these are generic, they don't always fit through the outside holes. As you can see there, it fits through the first hole there are one, two, three, four, five, six holes on this. If it's through the first hole and the fifth hole. So you can use your, um, your washer, make a mark in the first hole, make a mark in the fifth hole, John, job done. And then you can use your, oh, let's get the lining out of the way. So ideally you'd put this bit on before you put your lining on. I didn't really think about it when I was just making up a quick flap and, and bag for you. Now I'm not going to fold this over, but I am going to just pop it through. And you can see that pops through. It's, it feels more solid. Then you would put your washer on the back and then push the prongs out. I'm not going to push the prongs out because if I do that, then I've kind of wasted this piece of hardware. I don't like unbending them if I can help it. Now, I'm just going to grab my screwdriver. Because no matter how much you think you're ready for a, a video, you suddenly remember you haven't got something with you. Um, this just slots over the edge of the flap. So we've got our main part on. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And this just slots over the edge of the flap. Now I hear people sometimes saying, oh, I can't get it over, my flap is too thick. You may need to um, hammer the um, edge of your flap down um, with a, a rubber mallet, or what I find, if, if it's too thick, this isn't actually too thick, this will fit on quite nicely. And usually the decent quality ones have a reasonable um, size part there. But if you find that, for whatever reason you can't get it on because your flap is too thick you can do an extra few bits of stitching just where the hardware is going to be just go backwards and forwards a little bit and it will flatten it out a little bit it's difficult to see but that is flattened out I've just literally gone backwards and forwards just in this sort of slight bump that's the far side of my my top stitching and that will flatten it out a little bit um, then you can pop your hardware over super and then what you need and I'm surprised that not every bag maker has these um, even if you get them out of your Christmas crackers you need um, one of these little micro screwdrivers um, this sort of thing the sort of things that you use for fixing the arms on your glasses. I've got lots of them, there's a whole load of them. And just to show you that you can get them out of the Christmas cracker, there you go, those were out of the Christmas cracker. Did I save them? Yes, I did. Um, and all you're gonna do is once you've got your piece of hardware in place, you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna add those little screws. Now, ideally, you want your screwdriver to be magnetic. It helps to pick them up. And you're just gonna, I'm just gonna pop that centrally because it's not centrally. I'm just gonna screw those screws in. Oh, she says. Let's try that again, Crystal. Let's try a slightly smaller screwdriver. That one feels a bit big for the job. I appear to have three screws that have come with this one and yet there are only two screw holes in there so I'm not sure if perhaps I've got a screw from somewhere else that's come 
gotten in amongst these. Let's try that one. That's better. So we just screw those in and these are like self-tapping screws. They go right through and into the fabric. I'm not gonna put both of them in because I'm gonna take it back off again in a minute, so I don't really wanna, but the back of that screw should sit flush with the back of the hardware. And this one, this one takes two screws. I have got some that take three. Um, put your screws in. If you feel that you're gonna be worried about the things coming out, you can pop a little tiny drop of Loctite or super glue or something like that in. Um, without any bother, but pop both of your screws in. Don't forget this one's not actually fitted, this part. I've just kind of popped it in there. And there we go. One very acceptable, that's a very tiny, very tiny thumb lock. It'd be nice on a little purse or something like that, but probably a bit too small for a bag. These things come in literally every size you could imagine. Um, all of the colours, lots and lots of different designs, but these are the basic three ways of fitting. Are the basic ways of fitting. The cheap, the cheap ones, well, they just are cheap. As simple as that. Let's pop that back over here. And then this is the third one, which is exactly the same as the one I've just used. It's just a whole lot bigger. Slightly different shape. Fits in exactly the same way. We have the um, washer to go on the back. It comes supplied with screws. Again, the hole at the bottom, don't worry about that, isn't a screw hole. It's just the holes in the top there. And this size is probably much more appropriate. You can get them in all manner of sizes. I, I, I did have some massive ones at one point, and these just literally slot over the edge. 